Hello garden friends, thanks for taking a little bit of time away from your garden to come visit mine. Today we're talking about watering, fertilizing, bargains. Our friend from Davey's going to help me write a rhododendron that fell over, but first off, garden disaster. I'm so sick of the deer. Follow me. So last night, those two little bucks that have been running around and eating everything on that side of the fence somehow figured a way to get in. Tomato cages from up there were dragged all the way down here. They must get caught up in them. This hydrangea has been completely stripped of its flowers. The hosta's been trampled. I've got tomatoes over there on the ground. It's very frustrating. <laughs> I thought I had this set up so they could not get in here. They have not been able to get in here in years and years and years. And so now I've got to figure out a new plan of action to make sure to keep this area safe because this is where I'm growing my lilies my hostas, my hydrangeas, and just about everything else that the deer eat. So, I'm putting on my thinking cap. Let's get some watering done. Well, I'm still just discovering more damage that the deer did, and there's a pile of what deer leave here. This has got to be figured out today. How did they get in? How did they get in this fence? I have no idea. So for our watering, I only need to water out in the garden about once a week. One inch of water a week it takes to keep the plants happy. Try and water in the morning if you can. That way the foliage can dry out during the day and really soak your plants in. You want to get that water down there deep so those roots go down deep and when it does get dry they can pull up what they need. And try and keep the water at the base of the plant if you can. And we're just going to soak in our cucumbers, and man, our cucumbers are looking good. Sometimes I'll just leave this hose running for maybe 10 minutes at the base of a, a tomato plant and, you know, do some garden work, come back, move it, that sort of thing. This is really one of my least favorite jobs. I'm always hoping for rain. And you know, one of the three things that I always tell people, improve the soil, that means adding compost. Number two, know when the plant goes in the, the soil. And number three, don't let it dry out. This is the don't let it dry out part. Because if they do dry out, it, it's, it's tough on them. You give them the water they need, especially get them started off early in the morning. They're gonna be happy. I'm just gonna let this run a little bit. Really let that soak in. When the water is down low there, we get the best use of it. When we're sprinkling up from above, we're losing a lot of it to evaporation. You know, a lot of people ask, well, why, why wouldn't you just water at night and then you don't lose anything to evapor evaporation? Well, that's the problem when it comes to things like tomatoes that are susceptible to fungal issues. We don't want those leaves to be wet overnight because that's how the disease gets in. All right, next up will be some containers. I might water some tomatoes too go in the corner and cry a little bit about my namesake daylily that all the buds are gone. Ugh, dear. These are some of the tomatoes that took a beating last night in the great deer invasion. Fried green tomatoes, anybody? I want to get some water on these. You know, especially for tomatoes, again, we want to keep the water at the bottom, but we we always want that soil to stay evenly moist. If it does not stay evenly moist, a lot of times we'll get something called blossom end rot. That's where the bottom of a tomato will kind of turn black. And that's a calcium deficiency. And people often say, well, I'll just add calcium. It's the water that brings the calcium up here. The calcium is usually here. And so very important to keep the tomatoes watered and keep that soil evenly moist. Like I said, I'm just gonna let that run for 10 minutes and we'll move it to another plant. Then we'll go on to our containers and I got some green tomatoes if you'd like some. I'm gonna go get some over here too. Oh boy. Oh, gardening is not for the weak hearted. We'll figure out some way to use these. Chutney maybe? So we talked about our once a week out in the garden, but many times containers need water, sometimes daily, depending on the size. As I always tell people, when you're gonna do containers, bigger is better. The more mass you have in here, the less you have to water. But we're using the same principle of trying to come out in the morning, but also to really soak these in. 
I always like to fertilize my containers right after I water because they seem to take the fertilizer a little bit better instead of it just running out the bottom. Our deer resistant salvias remain untouched. I love these plants. Now we talked about watering in the morning. That's the best time to do it, but if you can't get to it in the morning, it's better to get water on the plants than let them dry out. So just be careful and keep the water at the bottom when possible. This is a salvia called Amistad that I love, and the first time I saw it was actually at a gas station. I had never seen the purple and black together, and now I grow it every year. My friend Frank Pizzi, who used to be in charge of horticulture at the zoo here in Pittsburgh, told me, you've got 10 moisture indicators <laughs> with you at all times. Because I said, how do you keep those containers looking so good? He goes, we're watering, watering, watering. So yeah, stick your finger down in there. If you feel water all the way down in there, if it's moist, you're good to go and you're done. All right, let's talk about fertilizing next. So I worry about hanging baskets that are in these small containers. Keeping water on them, you know, when there's no rain is a daily chore, but they also need fertilizer. Now this is not an ad for this. It's called Dramatic. It's from a company called Dram, D-R-A-M-M, -M, but it is my favorite organic fertilizer. I buy it just like you. No one is paying me to say that. And it's fish based. And when you apply it, it smells like low tide, but only for a couple of days, and it makes your plants go absolutely crazy. This is a concentrate, so I'm you know, getting this at a good price. This will last me half the summer at least, and I'm just gonna mix it up according to the directions with water, and then we'll just add it to these plants and some others too. <clears throat> it's just a little bit of the dramatic. It's a lot of water. When I asked Frank how often he fertilized those containers when he worked at the zoo, he said every time they water during the summer. And that's what kept them looking so good, so I hope that works for me. Looks like I'll be fertilizing this lilac below too. Let's get some other stuff done. The number one garden question is, why doesn't my hydrangea bloom? Well, this is a variety of hydrangea that is bulletproof and will always bloom. This is hydrangea white dome, and it's what we call a smooth hydrangea. There's nothing you can do to stop it from blooming. Even the deer will try by chomping on it, but they just, they don't like it that much. And it is an amazing pollinator plant. It just comes back on its own. These were four plants put on the outside of the vegetable garden, maybe five, six years ago, and it's just no maintenance, great pollinator plant. The only thing is about a hydrangea like this, it's the white flowers, basically bred from a native hydrangea into this, not the pink and blue flowers that so many people like. But this thing, it's a star in my garden, especially this time of the year. Now it's time for Talking Trees from the Davy Tree Expert Company. I'm joined again by Luke Warner. He's a district manager for the North Pittsburgh office from the Davy Tree Expert Company. And Luke, today, my rhododendron fell over. This was in the winter. Mm -hmm. The deer defoliated it. But hey, the good news is there's, there's leaves on it, but you look at this root, like half the thing is out of the ground. What should I do? <laughs> yeah, so we certainly want to get it up, you know, a little bit away from the deer, get those roots back in contact with the ground. Um, How it, is it that it, it's still living and doing its thing? Yeah. I, I would think when something like this happens, that would be it. Yeah, plants are pretty resilient. You know, they can surprise you a lot of times, but um, not all of its root system is, um, you know, broken off from the ground. So a lot of it's still very much under the ground where this tree lays. Um, so hopefully we can get it right back up. So are we just gonna like lift it up or how are we going to, how's it gonna make sure that it stays up? Yeah, so I, we have a few different things. There's some supports there. I also have uh, brought some Arbor Tie with me today. Um, you can use a lot of different products. This is one we use, but any, any webbing that you're gonna wrap around the, the plant there, um, as long as it's not constricting the new yeah, You don't wanna cut into the plant. Certainly not. And this is a nice old rhododendron. Once we get it righted, what are its chances? 
Uh, as long as we can get some, you know, moisture from Mother Nature or, or by you getting, you know, some water on it. I'm glad you mentioned watering because yeah. today was our watering episode. When we get it put up straight, you're going to have to tell me how much water to put on. I'm dragging the hose up here right off the bat. And then once we get it up, I want to ask about fertilization. Perfect. Go to work. All right. <laughs> <laughs> now, I brought a two by four. I wasn't sure if we needed that to, like as a support to start it or... You know what I mean? I, Off, I, I it's nice it. to have two people like we have now um, so we can have one person lift it up. What you want to do a lot of times is you want to have a couple different connection points or a couple different ways to, to tie this off. So we have this, uh, this sassafras here that we can uh, tie off to, but you don't want that one straight string where sometimes it can you know, sway back and forth. But uh, we'll get the first one on it and then we'll see what else we can do. So before we lift it up, I'm going to tie uh, a piece on here so that way when you're lifting it up, I can wrap it around that tree and kind of hold it so you don't have to stand there the whole time. Because I can probably only hold it for about a minute. <laughs> yeah. So is this specifically made for trees or you, you use it for trees? Uh, both. So this product is specifically designed, uh, it's called Arbor Tie, um, but there's a lot of different things you can use. Any of this one inch webbing type material works really well because it doesn't dig into the, the bark of the tree. Makes sense. And it doesn't have to be, you know, any particular special knot. I like to give it some slack here in between, um, so we have some uh, some room to play with. Or, you know the name of the knot you're using? Um, it's double reverse hinge walker. Right. <laughs> That's what I thought. Sounds about right. That's gonna shift down onto it. I don't think you were a Boy Scout, were you? I didn't finish. <laughs> it shows. <laughs> yeah, right. Don't You're tell me. Don't me? tell the tree guys at the <laughs> office. They're gonna make fun of me. All right, give this a shot. All right. How far up? All right. We got almost that making contact with the ground there again. The roots. All right. So we're gonna bring it back here. Um, sometimes you can wrap it. You know, right back onto this. Uh, this Just wrap it. Don't talk about it. Okay. <laughs> Is that right there enough to hold it, you think? Yep, so I can, if I let go here. No kidding. That's almost pretty good. All right. I'm just going to tie it off. All right. <laughs> Wasn't too bad, was it? No, no. I couldn't imagine doing it with a much bigger, though. <laughs> so we're going to tie it off somewhere else, though, too, right? Yeah, we can. It's actually holding a little bit better than I initially thought it was going to. You think that one, one for right here is going to be okay, or? Yeah. All right, I'm running down to get the hose. Perfect. And then we'll talk fertilization. That works. We didn't need my two by four. All right, so my idea is, and you tell me if this is right, I just want to kind of put this here and let it run for how long? Until this area is, uh, you know, pretty well watered, I would say to a, you know, a six inch, six inch depth where most of this root system is going to be. Sometimes when you lift up these plants or, or upright them again, you'll notice some large cracking here. Mm -hmm. Um, ideally, we can get some of this soil, yeah. kind of pull it back into place. That way, those roots aren't constantly drying out. How about mulching? In this environment, it doesn't need it because nature right. did it for us. And then, I'm thinking fertilizing because it's been stressed. Mm -hmm. Certainly. So anytime plants are stressed, you know they're going to be uh, much more susceptible to different diseases and insects and. Uh, you know, being a rhododendron, it can certainly have its uh, its own issues. So keeping it fertilized, get that vigor back, uh, reduce some of those lost nutrients that uh, it lost when it fell over is going to be very good to have this recover. One thing I forgot to ask, how long do we keep this on? Um, so I would leave it on for a while since this is such, you know, so much of this root system has been, had been damaged. It can stay on technically forever as long as you were to readjust that as it grows and make sure it's not growing into uh, into the stem itself. My idea for fertilization is holly tone, since it's a rhododendron, loves, loves acidic soil. Is mm -hmm. that okay? Perfect. All right, good. Well, that was pretty easy, actually. And I hope it, uh, hope it blooms next spring. Yeah, I think you're in good shape. I know I'm in good hands. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Thanks. Not a problem. Gardening isn't always easy, is it? I'll outsmart those deer one way or another. Please like, comment, and subscribe to the video. That's how the YouTube analytics work, and I appreciate it. Until next week, keep planting, and I'll see you then.